Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Evan Freiberger, and we've got some winter storms on the way. As I push this forward, you can see we not have just one, not just two, but potentially even three winter storms on the way. And it seems like they're pretty much all targeting the same area, with the exception of maybe a little bit more down there in the Ohio Valley. But in this forecast, we're going to be breaking all those storms down, as well as the chance for severe weather in northern Tennessee, going up into Kentucky, southern Ohio, and parts of West Virginia. Looking at the satellite imagery from space of the northern United States over here in the Ohio Valley in the Great Lakes, you can kind of see we have got our area of low pressure back up here, a little frontal boundary over here, and a little bit of moisture out in front of this low pressure system. But right here in this corridor, really from Oklahoma going all the way up into parts of Iowa, northern Illinois, Michigan, also northern Indiana going into Ohio in the northeast, we have a lot of winter weather advisories out there. This is mainly because of this low pressure system that is going to be progged here to drop a little bit of snow on the northern side. But the main thing that we're kind of looking out here is for that freezing rain that has that potential to develop and actually cause some significant impacts up here. So we're going to be breaking all of that down in today's forecast. But before we get started, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It helps us meet more people in the path of the snow, ice and severe weather storms. And if you do, thank you so much. Also, comment down below where you're viewing from. Very interested to see where everybody's at. So first on our list of snowstorms is snowstorm numero uno. What we're looking at here is the future radar. It's like a wacko lady in this tent with a future crystal ball. <laughs> Eventually, we're going to be looking into the future here. And as you can see, starting as early as 2 p.m. today, we could start to already see some freezing rain all the way from Topeka up into Des Moines. And eventually that is going to continue to push off to the east into areas like northern Illinois, northern Indiana, going into Ohio as well. On the northern side of the storm, we are expecting some wintry snow up there for northern Minnesota going into Wisconsin. And as I continue to push this forward, you can see that our main threat with this storm is going to be that freezing rain, where we're going to be expecting some pretty heavy ice accumulations that could potentially cause some power outages and turn pretty much entire highways into an ice skating rink. So unless your truck or car has ice skates, I would try to avoid the roads, to be honest. As we go into the overnight, into the early morning hours here of the 6th, that freezing rain continues to plague parts of Pennsylvania, even southern Michigan over there. But then you can really see as we get to 4 a.m., it starts to transition more into some snow, heavier snow over there in central New York. Also, that's forecasted to kind of push up here into Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Vermont, New Hampshire, as we move throughout the morning closer to the afternoon by around 11 a.m. And then as we get into 12, 1, 2, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m., we still have a little bit of snow hanging on up there in Maine. But for the most part, this storm is out of our hair by the time we get to the end of the 6th. In terms of our latest snowfall total amounts as you can see kind of the big winner winner chicken dinner it's going to be up here in northern minnesota going into northern wisconsin also up into the up of michigan with anywhere from four to five inches possible there also some decent snow is coming here for parts of pennsylvania new york massachusetts Rhode island and connecticut and also maine with anywhere from two to three inches here in the dark shaded blue some isolated spots of potentially up to five inches in some of our higher elevations one of the, my biggest concerns about this storm is going to be the freezing rain potential. Now, the initial start here is not going to be as impactful. As you can see, we're not talking about as much. We're talking about anywhere from 0 0.02, 0 0.01 inches of icing. Some isolated areas could be a little bit higher than that. So just watch out. Could be some slick spots. But for the most part, I think you guys are going to be all right from this. But be careful when you're driving, please. But when uh, rain really starts to fall and the grounds really start to cool as we go into the overnight portions of the fifth into the sixth, this is where I'm most concerned about some of our heaviest ice accumulations, especially over here south of Muncie near Dayton, Lima, Bellefontaine, also near Columbus, going up to Mansfield, also potentially near Cleveland or over Cleveland, also in the, some of the higher elevations here of Pennsylvania and Maryland, also going into a little bit there of West Virginia, Sandy north and east of Pittsburgh, Oil City, and also St. Mary's, Lewiston, Chambersburg as well, all need to be watching out for some 
pretty significant icing. I mean, anywhere from a quarter of an inch. Once you get above that, power outages are possible and also pretty dangerous driving conditions. But yeah, that's it for storm one. Let's hop over here to the GFS and look at storm number two. All right, so there's storm number one on the GFS. You see general agreement here with most of our icing happening over here, either in Ohio or Pennsylvania with some snow transitioning up there into the northeast. That eventually moves out of our hair. And then we have storm number two. As we go into the eighth here of February, could potentially see some more snow up there now in southern Minnesota, a little bit more into Wisconsin, then a little bit more there into Michigan, maybe even Chicago and northern Indiana and northern Ohio getting in on some heavier snow. And that's going to move off to the east into northern Pennsylvania and New York. And then eventually, as we go into the nighttime hours of the ninth, going into the early, sorry, the eighth, going into the early morning hours of the ninth, could potentially see some pretty heavy snow over here in parts of Connecticut, Rhode Island, also Massachusetts as well before that scrapes and moves off of the coast. Now, we're about to look at the snowfall totals, but I do want to stress here that this is uncertain. It's about as uncertain as a cat jumping off of a bed into a wall. Doesn't know what's going to happen. It does it anyway. Causes a da disaster. <laughs> but I do want to show you guys where this extra snow could be possible. I mean, we could be talking about, you know, anywhere from five to six inches all the way up here in the northeast. And if the GFS is right, we could get even some higher totals up into some of the mid portions of New York going into areas like Massachusetts with getting close to a foot of snow with some additional snow of anywhere from four to five inches possible in southern Minnesota going all the way into Michigan as well. This storm is also going to have some freezing rain potential as of right now. It seems like most models are kind of hinting at this area. I would not take these ice, account, ice amounts as fact, though, just because this is kind of how what happened with our last one, the storm that's happening pretty much tonight going into tomorrow. You know, the ice accumulations were looking like over an inch at one point, And then now we're talking about anywhere from a quarter of an inch to a half an inch. So just keep in mind, this could be a little bit over the top or maybe a little bit conservative. It's kind of hard to tell uh, this far out from this storm actually happening. But we definitely got to watch out for some ice accumulations, especially over here in Maryland, Northern Virginia, going into Pennsylvania and New Jersey, and potentially even into the Ohio Valley as well. Well, and the next storm we're going to be looking at is probably our most uncertain storm storm at this point. It's pretty far out in the forecast, but it's interesting. We could be actually talking about one or two shots of snow pretty much out of one little low pressure system that's going to be ejecting moisture out in front of it. And as you can see, you know, starting on the 10th, this is when our potential starts. Now, again, what really happens with this storm is a little bit confusing, especially given the fact that a couple days ago, the models were saying maybe even parts of northern southeast could get some of that snow. But as you know, as we're in this range, things shift around a bunch and it really does seem like we're getting a northern trend with our third storm for around the 10th time frame here but uh but yeah it looks like at least for now the gfs is saying that some snow is going to be possible all the way uh you know either into missouri also going into parts of illinois indiana also into ohio potentially into the northern virginia maryland pennsylvania area with a lot of moisture and rain on the southern side and in fact with all three of these storms as you can see kind of in the same areas down here in the southeast and parts of tennessee see Kentucky going into Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia. We're going to continue to see rain after rain after rain for multiple days here. So a lot of rain could potentially be coming into the southeast over the beginning portions of the 11th. And some of that is going to have some severe weather. Now, speaking of severe weather, we actually have a marginal risk for severe weather today. It's going to include the risk for some damaging winds and maybe even some tornadoes today. It's a very small chance for tornadoes, so I wouldn't freak out about it. We're only talking talking about a 2% chance at this point, but still something to keep an eye on there. If you live in Murfreesboro, Nashville, Clarksville, going up into Hopkinsville, Louisville, Lexington, Richmond, Maysville, Cincinnati, Charleston, um, West Virginia as well, with some thunderstorms possible really all the way from Arkansas going up into the Ohio Valley and also Maryland and Virginia as well. You know, we've been talking about the potential for severe weather a couple of days ago. And as you can see, we're looking at a more muted scenario than what the Euro was showing, so which is good news, but still, severe weather is still possible uh, as we move throughout today. And here's some of the timing on that. As I push this forward, you can see that by the time we get into around 2 p.m., we're going to start to see some thunderstorms develop over here west of Nashville. Now, some of those might be severe, some of them might not be, but uh, you know, we're watching it. It is certainly very possible that some of those might get over that severe limit. And if they mature enough, we could be talking about a small chance for tornadoes. You can see as we get into around 12 a.m., we have another area of some 
convection happening over there near Maysville, south of Louisville, and also north of Nashville. These are probably going to be our main storms of today. This is probably where our highest chance for severe weather will be, but keep in mind, our highest chance for today is still a low chance for severe weather. But regardless, there's definitely a couple of storms in there that I could see potentially maybe causing some severe weather. And there's going to be enough instability and enough spin that if somebody gets unlucky, you might get a tornado warning or maybe even a tornado today, especially down here further to the south where we have a little bit of a shortwave trough ejecting into this region near Hopkinsville, Clarksville, Nashville, Murfreesboro, also over there near Bowling Green, Campbellsville, Danville, and Somerset. I'll be keeping an eye on this throughout the night, but uh, it's going to be a really early morning event here. So, you know, just make sure you have some way to get alerts if you are going to sleep. But the good news is that it's a very low chance for tornadoes. Your highest chance of seeing anything is going to be damaging winds and maybe a small little bout of hail there near Lexington, Richmond, Maysville and Charleston. Now, in terms of temperatures, it's going to continue to stay warm down here in the southeast and the central plains where we could potentially see some 90s turn over here in Texas with 60s to 70 degree temperatures hanging on. On down here today in the southeast in the central plains and then eventually we're going to start to see that try to shift a little bit more to the north into areas like the ohio valley also the tennessee valley as well with some 50s and 60s expected over there and then eventually we start to see some a little bit cooler air start to bring its way into the northern tier of the united states with montana north dakota and minnesota all getting in on some of those negative degree temperatures there with the heat continuing to hang on you can really see we have quite the gradient here with near zero temperatures up in the northern united states with potentially 90 degrees temperatures for a lot of portions of Texas there. And, you know, as I push this forward, you can see that that doesn't really change that much. We do get a little bit of a boundary here on the 8th. Might have to watch out for a some severe weather there, but it's a little bit too early to really dive into that. I might dive into that more tomorrow. But uh, but yeah, I mean, overall, there's certainly uh, a lot of warmth that's going to be sticking around. And the first little chance of a cool down is going to be coming into the ninth here as we have that cooler air sink a little bit further down in the south for areas like Oklahoma going into Texas, also the southeast and Tennessee Valley. Still a lot of warmth hanging on over there in South and North Carolina with single digits still up there in the north. And then eventually, uh, as I push this forward into the next day, you can see that that little warm air and cold air boundary kind of just sits there for a while. So, you know, really anywhere from today going into the 10th, we're going to be talking about warmer temperatures for most of Texas going into Louisiana and the southeast. But as we move into the 8th, 9th, 10th, we're going to start to see a cool down work its way into the northern portions of some of those states. But yeah, everybody, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it so much. Again, if you haven't hit that like and subscribe button, please consider doing that before you leave if you did enjoy this video. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.